Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. What we celebrate this morning, isn't it? Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which thou hast seen, which was the vision of Christ. The things which are. What's the things that are? The church. The things which shall be hereafter. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 and verse 1. The formal treaties have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Listen, verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive. I serve a risen Savior. He's in my heart today. After his passion, by many infallible proofs, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Lord, I'm so thankful this morning that I am a part of the church that is alive in Christ Jesus. We're not a dead church. We're not a dead religion. But we are alive in Christ as you are alive this day. Help us to so be the church, to so be looking, Father, unto that sky, looking for that day when you come again to receive us unto yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. He mentioned in this verse that I just read to you, and you might want to keep your place right there for a little bit, but he mentioned about his passion. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21 he tells us about this, 1 Peter 2 and 21, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow His steps. Who did no sin, neither was Gal found in His mouth, whom when He was revived, revived not again. When He suffered, He threatened not, but committed Himself to Him that judgeth righteously. Listen, verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. We read about this passion in the book of Mark. We'll quickly read about it this morning. Mark Chapter 15, what he did for us in verse 33. Mark 15 and verse 33, And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lamana sabbatana, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he called for lies. One ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Let alone let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. Verse 37. Oh, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house this morning. Listen to these words. And Jesus cried with a loud voice. One of the Gospels tells us that the cry that he made was, It is finished. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Keep that in mind. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man 
was the Son of God. His passion. The price that He paid. You see, Christ came to die. He came to give His life for you and me. I owed a debt I could not pay. He paid a debt He did not owe. He gave Himself for me. There was no way that I could pay or atone for my sins. I was sinful. I was born into sin. All we like sheep have gone astray. We went everyone unto our own ways. None of us is righteous in ourselves. We can't do enough good works. We can't say enough good things. We can't come to church enough. We can't do this or we can't do that. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God that He has given us that He paid the price for my sins. The cross. No man could send him to the cross. We'd seen many times that Jesus, when they tried to apprehend them, just went right through their midst and they could not touch him. But on this particular night in the garden when they came to get him and they came with swords and staves, he said, why do you come with swords and staves? Was I not in the temple with you every day teaching and you hear it? Why do you come out here? You see, he went willingly to the cross. He had prayed into the sweat, became as great drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane, asking that the Father would take this suffering and these things from him. But he was willing even back at creation. You see, I want you to stop and think about that for a moment. When the Father turned and he said, Let us make man in our own image. Who was he talking to? He had to be talking to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. Jesus could have said, Father, I don't want to suffer. Let's make another creation. Let's let's do something different. But Christ was the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. That's great love. Knowing what it would cost him. Knowing what the price that he would have to pay for man. Knowing these things, yet he created us. Even in Genesis 3 and 15, he foretold of the cross of the things that would happen, of the things that would take place that he would come. And though that old serpent, that old devil that I despise and hate so bad may bruise his heel as he did on the cross, Christ would crush his head as Christ did upon the cross of Calvary. You see, there's an age-old law. An age-old law. God is a just and a righteous, and a holy God. Our laws, man laws, are not such. Man bends laws for for different man. The old buddy system, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? You see it every day. If you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody, you can get something done. If you don't know nobody, you're hurting when it comes to the law. But God is just. Every man that has sinned, every man that sin came upon deserves what? Death. I was born into sin, no way around it. And because I was born into sin, I deserved death. But He loved me so much. The penalty of death was upon me. And there was no way I could wipe it away. The debt was too great. The debt was too much. And there was no way that I could pay the price. You see, it takes spotless holy blood to wash sins away. That age-old law says that the wages of sin is death. But oh, I'm so thankful because of Christ Jesus. He went on in the Gospels and he said, But the gift of God, the gift of God... The gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. They took Christ to that cross. I'm not going to get into great detail this morning of His passion. You know the suffering that He suffered. He could have called legions of angels at any moment to have took Him from that cross. But I believe He looked down in 2016 and He saw me and He saw you and He desired us. Oh, I know that devil tells you you're undesirable and he brings condemnation upon you. But Christ so loved the world that he gave. He gave for you and me. 
The Romans were very cruel, and I'll, I'll speak this and I'll go on. They had devised this torture thing called the cross. And upon the cross, as they nailed his hands and his feet, as the Word of God had said would happen, with each breath that he had to breathe, he had to pull himself up. They would hang the individual in such a way that they could not pull air into their lungs unless they pulled themselves up. With each agonizing breath as he hung there between heaven and earth, he had to pull himself up to breathe. That's why they would come along later and they would break the legs. They broke the legs, they could no longer pull themselves up and they would suffocate. Christ hung there because he loved us. The weight of the sins of the world was laid upon him. Me and you know how awful sin feels. Oh, I know when, when you're right in the midst of sin and things are going on and the party's going right and man, everything's great, it, it feels good. But you know what I mean when I say how bad sin feels. You know the penalty that is left. You know the nights that we as sinners have laid awake with those things on our mind that that has happened and has went on. You know that penalty and that guilt and that awfulness of sin. But Christ had never knew sin. But He was willing to accept the weight of the sin of the world upon Him because He loved us so much. I heard someone put it like this, and it brings it down so simple and so plain. It would be as though we as a person had been caught, and we were guilty, and we were brought before the judge. And there was no one there to plead our case. And we stand there, and we know we are guilty. As charged. And there's, there's, there's no way that we can get ourselves out. Money can't be paid. Whatever can't be done. And the judge we see sitting behind the judgment seat with his robes upon him. Now I've been in traffic court. And I should have been a lot more than what I have been. Fashion is good for the soul. And I don't like it. I don't like standing in that court and him looking down at me and condemning me. But think for a moment beyond that, that he stands there and he condemns and the penalty for what has taken place is death. And we get close to the judgment seat and all the things are read. And we hear the judge slam the gavel down and he says, guilty as charged. And the penalty is death. But then the courtroom draws real quiet and silent. There is something different going on. They look and they see the judge is standing up from his seat. And he is standing up from his seat and he is walking around. And as he is walking around, he is taking those judgment robes off. And he is laying them to the side. And he walks around and he comes and he stands right beside you. And he points his finger up at the desk where judgment has been pronounced. And he says, but I, hallelujah, will pay the price. Greater love had no man than that he laid down his life for a friend. But David, that's what he done. I don't deserve anything this morning. Chris, I don't deserve life this morning. I don't deserve the very breath that I breathe. There's nothing that I can do. But he loved me so much that he laid aside his, his glorious robes in heaven. And he came down and he took on the form of man. He that was without sin. He was the only one that could have done it. No one else. He was the Lamb. And He came around and He stood beside of me 
And he said, I'll pay the price. How could anybody reject that? How could you turn that love aside? How could you shun such love that Christ has for us? He willingly paid the price, but not did He only pay the price of death. He died. If Christ died not, we're still dead in our trespasses and sin. But He died. They came by and they stuck the spear, the sword, the sword in His side. And the reason they stuck the spear in His side is, is that He no longer, once He died, He no longer could pull Himself up. And they stuck that spear because in Scripture it foretold that the spear will be stuck in His side. Everybody else had broke the legs. But when they came to Christ, they marveled he was already dead. And to be sure, he was dead. For me and for you, they stuck the spear in his side. And forthwith came forth blood and water. He had died. He had already separated. They take him and they place him in a tomb. But on that third and glorious day, just as Christ had foretold, he came forth victorious over death, hell, and the grave, and is our victor. We read this morning, I won't get into it this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Brother Larry taught on that this morning. But he is alive. Death is destroyed. And in Christ Jesus, receiving the gift that he paid at the cross. You see this morning, it is all about the cross. It's not about the name or the tag on the church. It's not about you and it's not about me. It's about believing and receiving what Christ has done for me. And believing and knowing that He lives forevermore. I'm glad this morning that I'm alive in Christ. Alive forevermore. I'm glad I know that one day soon, and I believe very soon He's coming again. He's coming again to receive me unto Himself that where He is, there I may be also. And I long for that moment. And I long for that day, Lord. I thank You this morning. What great love the Father have bestowed upon me. That You was willing to suffer and bleed and die for me. And rose again victorious over death, hell, and the grave. So that I know that I have victory in you. I'm not worthy. I cannot make myself worthy. (coughs) But I thank you for that precious gift this morning. By simple faith. By simply believing in you. I'm so thankful I have received that free gift. Lord, while we're in your presence this morning, every heart is open to you. Look down inside our hearts. Look down inside of our lives. And I pray, Lord, that there be one. One this morning who has not made that call in an election sure, who has not received that forgiveness of sin, who has not received and walked in that love. Let this be the day. Let this be the hour, Lord. I praise you, Father. I'm not going to wait but just a moment. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I'm so thankful Christ Jesus is all I need. If we've ever lived in a world that is turned upside down, we live in a turned upside down world in this day and hour. But Christ is all I need. If I've got Him, I don't have to fear what might come tomorrow, what might come today. Because I know I serve a risen Savior. If you don't have that assurance this morning, this altar is open. If you don't have the assurance of knowing that Christ is your Lord and you have received the free gift of salvation, 
This altar's open this morning. I'm not going to beg, plead, nor prime. The Lord's spoken to your heart. He's all you need. He's all you need. You, you wonder, Lord, what, what is it that I'm missing? What is it that I need? Why is it life going like I think it should? He's all you need. 